Hello and welcome to India's World. As the US withdraws its combat troops from Afghanistan, most regional players will have to recalibrate their policies to protect their national interests in that country. China recently hosted the meeting of foreign ministers of Russia and Central Asian countries as a part of what is called the Istanbul process. This was to discuss the post-2014 scenario in Afghanistan. China has both commercial and security interests in Afghanistan. Afghanistan's vast natural resources present an enticing investment opportunity for China. Afghanistan has significant amounts of oil and gas reserves in the Amu Darya Basin or the Oxus River Basin. It is also estimated to have $1 trillion of untapped mineral resources such as copper, iron, gold and lithium. Afghanistan also represents a threat to China if it becomes a safe haven for the Uyghur Islamic separatists from China's restive province of Xinjiang. To discuss how China's interests might be impacted once there are no foreign forces to stabilize the internal security situation of Afghanistan, we have with us a distinguished panel of experts. We have with us Ambassador Vivek Karju. He was India's ambassador to Myanmar, Thailand and Afghanistan. And he witnessed the transition of that country from Taliban rule to democratic rule. And we have with us my old friend, Ambassador Jayant Prasad. He has served as India's ambassador to Nepal, Algeria, and most importantly for this discussion, he was also India's ambassador to Afghanistan. And we have uh, Dr. Jabin Jacob. He's assistant director of Institute of Chinese Studies in New Delhi. Uh, he knows China very well, speaks the language, and follows developments in this region. I welcome you to this discussion. Let me begin with you, Vivek. What is the nature of China's present interest in Afghanistan and to what extent has China been successful in pursuing them? Well, I think uh, you outlined them well. Uh, it has security interests which stem essentially from uh, uh, Uyghur uh, separatism and uh, indeed Uyghur terrorism too, yeah. militancy and terrorism. And it has economic interest. In the latter, as far as economic and commercial interests are concerned, uh, essentially, it wants to link Afghanistan to Xinjiang and Western China uh, and wants to use uh, Afghanistan's vast uh, mineral resources. Uh, now, the crucial issue is how much is China willing to invest in uh, post-2014 We'll security. come to that, but how successful have they been in pursuing these interests was my question. Well, at the moment, it's very difficult to assess because they haven't really uh, ventured far in terms of exploiting uh, natural resources. Uh, they have secured copper uh, reserves uh, in terms of the Ainak uh, copper mines and they have a concession in the Amu Darya Basin where they started some work, but that stopped. Okay. Uh, Security-wise, they've been in touch with Afghan security agencies but uh, I don't think uh, there has been much cooperation. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Prasad, as long as foreign troops were managing the, the internal security situation, doing the heavy lifting, China didn't have to address the issue of internal security of Afghanistan. Not at all. Now that uh, foreign for forces will go out of that country, can China's policies towards Afghanistan afford to remain the same as they were earlier or would they have to modify them? They will be more engaged on the training side, perhaps. They would training be of... Uh, Training, police, including police of and police army. and perhaps at a later stage the army if uh, things develop uh, in a particular direction. But they would be wary of involving themselves in the security domain. They have been wary in the past and uh, the China's way of looking at Afghanistan is heavily predicated by its relationship also with Pakistan. Uh, but the more China involves itself with Afghanistan, the better it is for Afghanistan and for the rest of the international community because among the countries that are contiguous to Afghanistan, only China has a capacity to shoulder some responsibility which could be serious. Of in internal of security and stabilization? Not internal security, but in terms of economic involvement, development assistance, which also they have been very reticent in the past because if you look at the last 13 years record, their commitments were only $250 million over a 13-year period, which is really, really small compared to what other very small European countries have contributed. Uh, but among the neighbors of uh, uh, Afghanistan who have a shared border with it, Wakhan Corridor, they share a border of about 90 kilometers. It is an inhospitable terrain and uh, Afghans are very keen that the Chinese build transit uh, linkages and communication networks through Wakhan, but the Chinese have been reticent okay. to do so. Okay, uh, Jepin, 
do you find that China follows a different approach to the Taliban uh, as compared to the US and Indian approach to the Taliban? And do you think the Chinese approach to the Taliban would therefore uh, you know, create tensions between China and, uh, on the one side and US and India on the other? Um, I think the Chinese approach as of now, there's nothing really to show that it is uh, different from what the Americans or what the Indians think of. Uh, essentially, as Ambassador Katyu has just mentioned, the security issue is their prime concern. If the the, the Al-Qaeda in South Asia has already declared the Xinjiang area as one of their focus areas. So this has to be kept in mind. Uh, the Chinese are, that's it, the Chinese are not averse to opening dialogue with the Taliban. See, the Chinese basic position so is... So therefore the position is different from that of India's. Uh, that it is. But, you know, primarily it will be driven by security interests. The moment they see that the security interests or the in <coughs> Xinjiang is going out of control, I think they will take a hardline position, similar to the Indians and the Americans. Let me, let me come to you on this question, Ambassador Prasad. If China does not cut a deal with the Taliban, might not uh, eastern Afghanistan be become a staging post for the Uyghur Islamists for attacks on China? Absolutely. So the problem is that the Afghans want to involve China in solving also their internal political issues. Pakistan doesn't want it because Pakistan's entire objective in the triangular relationship between China, Pakistan and Afghanistan was that they wanted all the intermediation to be restricted through them. Mm -hmm. And so the Afghans have succeeded for the first time in the, since the end of the Taliban regime in 2001 in engaging China directly on issues of security interest to China. China always had this negative security interest in Afghanistan to protect themselves from the basing uh, of the ETIM, the East Turkestan Islamic Movement terrorists in Afghanistan and Pakistan. But now they are openly acknowledging that they expect yeah. Afghan support for it. Yeah. And Afghanistan has been successful in getting China in involved in this. Okay, Vivek, you wanted to say something. Look, the Chinese will look at Afghanistan very largely <coughs> through their relationship with Pakistan. The main relationship is Pakistan. They will not jeopardize that relationship at any cost. Yes, they will try to persuade the Pakistanis, quote-unquote, very gently, to move in a direction which is a little more rational. Will they succeed? I have my doubts. No, but this little bit of pushing basically would mean push the Uyghurs out of the northwestern region of Pakistan, push them into Afghanistan. Once they are in Afghanistan, you have to cut a deal with the Taliban. No, no. It is not so simple. Why should they push them, want them to be pushed into Afghanistan? They would, they ideally, they would like to take them out themselves. Yeah. But that, I think, is going to be difficult. Yeah. So this game will go on. Okay. And the Chinese play all sides at the same time. So they have played with the Taliban. They have historical connections with the Taliban. And if you notice, they are totally uncritical of the Taliban. At no point do you hear any statement okay. criticizing the Taliban's okay. record in anything okay. from the Chinese. So they try to persuade them and they use the Pakistanis to put any to put pressure on the Taliban to and they've done that historically even when the Taliban were in power in Kabul to to go a, a little soft on their connections with the Uyghurs. Okay. The Taliban have played this game too. All right. Skillfully. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. We need to take a break at this point. We'll be back again with this interesting discussion in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're discussing China's interest in Afghanistan and how these interests might have to be modified and pursued in a different manner once the Americans pull out. Um, Jabin, how does uh, Afghanistan fit into the Go West uh, uh, policy of uh, China, which says that build uh, stronger economic links with all those countries that uh, about the western provinces of China, Xinjiang being one of them, and of course the Silk Route uh, project? Well, there are two aspects to it. One is China's own internal development needs, which is about developing the Tibetan economy, the Xinjiang economy, and building their connections. Because if you look at it, these economies, even though they are poorer in the Chinese national economies uh, scale, they are much better off than the Central Asian economies. So there is a way of uh, building Chinese uh, dominance through these economies by the connection. The other aspect is, the Chinese genuinely believe that economic development <coughs> is a panacea for political problems. 
So they are trying also to sell a Chinese model of development different from a uh, ideologically driven model mm -hmm. that the West posits in Afghanistan or in Central Asia. So I think that is also something that we need to pay attention to. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Prasad, how important is Afghanistan as a market for Chinese goods, which is what you're suggesting in a, in, in a way, considering that 70% of the population of Afghanistan lives in poverty, although that will not always be the case, but that's the case now. No, I don't think the Chinese are looking at Afghanistan today or tomorrow as a market for their products. They are looking at Afghanistan as a mineral resource rich and energy rich country. Okay. And their hope is to use uh, Afghanistan as Afghanistan has played a role in its history yeah. as a hub connecting uh, Iran and a backdoor entry to Iran would be possible through Afghanistan. Also connected so well with Central Asia. Uh, so, th uh, the future of uh, Afghan-Chinese uh, economic relationship is predicated entirely on development of communications and extraction of the mineral wealth of okay. Afghanistan because they also have rare earths yeah. besides copper and oil and gas. Lithium is called the Saudi Arabia of lithium. Uh, 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 Vivek, uh, on, on mineral investments, they've not been very easy. You mentioned the... Uh, the copper mine, the Ainak copper mine in the Logar province, where Chinese have promised $3 billion of investment. Last year, after Taliban attack, China had to withdraw all its uh, uh, workers from uh, Ainak. So do you think the physical security of these establishment, uh, these investments is what would determine Chinese policy towards Afghanistan in the future? I, I think that is the first prerequisite. To any investment, you need to defend and safeguard your, uh, your assets and your people. Uh, and that is not going to be easy because uh, howsoever we, uh, we look at the post-2014 situation, yeah. the s most important fact is the Taliban challenge, which is, which is there and which will, which will so come. The security threat actually comes from the Taliban. That is right, backed by Pakistan. Let's not forget the Pakistan factor. The Taliban in Pakistan are one at the moment. Yes, but Pakistan would not tell them to go and attack uh, Chinese workers in INAC, would it? Look, the point is that insecurity doesn't only come from a direct physical attack. You can't have INAC as an island of peace and because the mineral has to be mineral wealth has to be extracted. But if mineral wealth is not extracted from the single copper concession you've got, then it has implications for future concessions. But of course. But of course, that is a given that in the future, this mineral wealth needs to be extracted, but the, the important requirement is peace in Afghanistan. So China, and China, China's adversary in Afghanistan then is not Taliban, but Pakistan. Indeed it is, but that is what I told you right at the beginning, that it is Pakistan, it recognizes that, but it has a larger stake in Pakistan, and it will not jeopardize that okay. stake for the sake of <coughs> Afghanistan. Yeah. Mr. Prasad, um, I'll come to you, Javin, in a minute. Um, given the concession that China National Petroleum Corporation has received in the Amu Darya Basin, they've got uh, uh, three uh, licenses there, Kashkari Field, uh, the Bazar Khami, and the Zamrud Dusa oil blocks have been given to them. $700 million worth of investment over five years. So do you see uh, at the back of Chinese mind an attempt to integrate uh, Afghanistan into their Central Asian uh, pipeline network? Of course, that's the objective. Or is it just that they want a foot in the door when the situation uh, uh, stabilizes, then they are the first to go for oil and gas exploration in North and Northwest Afghanistan? But what you did said now doesn't hmm. contradict with your first statement, okay. which is that they have staked uh, and put a bid on uh, some of the important concessions, like Mess Anak. It entailed an investment of $3 billion. Yeah. I went there because Mess Anak is very close to Kabul and they have excavated some exquisite Buddhist monuments from the 6th century, 7th century BC, including whole stupas and uh, uh, idols in, in, uh, in, in, it, in the stupa and around it. So I had gone there and the Chinese had already in 2010 built up all the housing, all the boundary walls, everything. All the preparations were there for the Chinese workers to come en masse in big strength to start using that facility. But they have not been able to exploit that mine at all. And similar would be the case with, uh, you know, they did some exploratory drilling in the Amudarya Basin, uh, but had to pull out subsequently. 
No, also because uh, there was no refining facility. Right. They couldn't tie that up with those bakes. So then right. you would have to uh, connect them to the pipeline. Yes, well, either the pipeline or you take it uh, through okay. other means. Okay. You wanted to say something, JV? I mean, I think one thing we have to remember is that the Chinese are employing multiple approaches. They are not going to go into Afghanistan on their own. One of the reasons why there has been uh, receptivity to India's membership in the SCO is precisely because the Chinese are hoping to employ a multilateral yeah, approach. Yeah. We are going to discuss yeah. that. We are going to discuss that. But my, uh, what I really wanted to ask you was, do you see China's security concerns in Xinjiang overshadowing, taking precedence over their commercial interests in Afghanistan? I think yes. At the, bo uh, at the bottom of it, it's their security interests that will rule. I mean, they can very well, I mean, a few billion dollars in Afghanistan is not something, uh, not a big deal for them. They can very well withdraw and concentrate on other matters. So how will this conflict play out between Ch uh, China's security interests and its commercial interests? Do you see any conflict in pursuing both the interests or do you think both can be pursued simultaneously? There is a fundamental conflict because so long as there is insurgency and terrorism in Afghanistan, the Chinese economic connect with Afghanistan will not work. So first and foremost, the Chinese interest is stabilization of Afghanistan, only then step two can come. Okay, wait, wait. That is why the Chinese have also been talking quietly for, of, for national reconciliation in Afghanistan. Their, uh, their idea is the same as perhaps the Americans and certainly the Pakistanis, that the Taliban have to be accommodated in the political processes. So, uh, and they feel that once through democratic that, means or through uh, by paratrooping them? No, no you through. can't. They, rec they recognize you can't paratroop them. So, they, ha they haven't spelled that out. But they, as, as is usual with the Chinese, they make a statement okay. and they don't, need, they don't elaborate on it. They've said this and I think that is their starting point. Okay. That is what they want. But they recognize, I'm sure, as all of us do, that that's easier said than done. Okay. Because the Taliban are not the kind who reconcile. Okay. All right, we need to take a break again at this point. We'll be back again in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're discussing China's interest in Afghanistan and how China's interest might be impacted by U.S. troop pullout from that country. Um, uh, Ambassador Prasad, do you think China's involvement in the Istanbul process to get uh, Afghanistan's, is to get Afghanistan's neighbors on board in a multilateral cooperative framework to, to stabilize the situation there after the U.S. pulls out. Definitely, that's the objective. And the Afghan objective is also equally important. We must consider that. Afghanistan is trying to use China's good offices to exercise positive influence on Pakistan because there has been no terrorism or insurgency anywhere in the world that has been ended with help and support and sustenance coming from the contiguity. So, Pakistan poses a fundamental problem to stabilization in Afghanistan and Afghanistan is seeking to leverage its China connection to resolve this problem or attenuate it. And yeah, one of the things that uh, Pres uh, President Ashraf Ghani has not been able to do during this visit, he, I mean, he made tremendous gains in this visit. There's a new Chinese commitment of, to development partnership and cooperation. Uh, there is uh, a commitment uh, uh, from the Afghan side to help in the Uyghur uh, terrorist uh, issue. But one thing which uh, Ashraf Ghani pressed the Chinese and the Chinese were not very enthusiastic in their response was a direct connectivity with China through the Wakhan corridor because yeah. the Chinese preference is still to use Torkham and uh, the existing connection between Pakistan and China. Quickly. No, that's historical. They've never allowed uh, the Afghans uh, to have this direct connectivity, as the yeah. has said, and consistently the Afghans during Karzai's time asked for that, for the border to yeah. be opened, and they've said no. Okay, no, my question really was not about Afghan interests, although that's fascinating. What is China's interest in setting up a multilateral framework? Is it because they themselves would never put uh, boots mm -hmm. on the ground, they would never want to do anything unilaterally because they have a policy of non-interference in uh, uh, in, in the uh, internal affairs of other countries, but they could be part of a, uh, a multilateral uh, 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 effort well, to, to stabilize Afghanistan. See, they have learned from the Soviet and the American experience. They don't want to be sole targets. They want to take cover behind the multilateral framework. And by the way, they are not really uh, non-interfering in Afghanistan. They have made statements on Afghan institutions. They have yeah. called for when uh, Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, you know, the, the election... Uh, a dispute was going on. They called for the two parties to cooperate, engage in a coalition government. 
So at many stages, <coughs> the Chinese have made statements on the Afghan political process. And they are not, they do not ever say an Afghan government-led process. They say an Afghan-led, Afghan-managed, which is to say that the Taliban could very well be part of the political process in Afghanistan. Okay. Mr. Prasad, in this emerging scenario, is there any space for Sino-Indian cooperation um, in Afghanistan despite Pakistan's all-weather friendship with China? There is, absolutely, because both of us want the stabilization of Afghanistan. Both uh, want Afghanistan to become <coughs> uh, an interconnected place where there is unfettered relationships possible with the contiguity, the neighborhood of free uh, movement of not just goods and services and investments, but also uh, China would not want uh, the last part of movement of peoples and ideas, but they would be wanting Afghanistan to become a crossroads, a commercial crossroads, uh, an investment crossroads, a basically a trade, transportation, uh, energy and minerals hub yeah. for the region. So can India and China cooperate in Afghanistan, Vivek? Look, let's be realistic here. As That's Jayant, your way of saying no. No, as Jayant has said, we all want the same thing. That China should be a, a, a hub of connectivity for energy flows, people's Afghanistan flows. Afghanistan should be sorry, hub. Afghanistan. Energy flows, people's flows, trade flows, etc. But the joker in the pack is Pakistan. The basic question is, is China willing to pressure Pakistan? And the evidence is no. Yeah. So, whereas in it might be the ideal, but I do do not see. So let, let me let me take this to a China expert. Does I, China realize? Does China realize that Pakistan's patronage of Islamic militants can come in the way? It's the biggest roadblock block in its twin interests in uh, in Afghanistan. That is commercial interests and its interests in uh, making sure that the Uyghur uh, Islamist uh, uh, terrorists don't get uh, a foothold in eastern Afghanistan. Do they realize it? They realize it, but the Chinese are caught between a rock and a hard place yeah. as far as Pakistan is concerned. Um, I don't think the Chinese are in a position yet to let go of Pakistan. Hmm. But, you know, that said, realism can also mean that India and China will find ways to cooperate in Afghanistan. I, we cannot rule that out. Okay. You want to say something or you just want to laugh? <laughs> no, I want to say, and pigs will fly. <laughs> and pigs will fly. <laughs> Master Prasad, how should India view the, the Chinese proposal made in the last meeting of the Istanbul process that, uh, 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 that Afghanistan, uh, uh, China and Pakistan should launch a peace and reconciliation forum <coughs> where the Afghans would talk to the Taliban and China and Pakistan would act as facilitators? You know, there is every... Uh, reason why this should, we should encourage this to go ahead because it would put pressure on Pakistan to uh, change its behavior. And let's see whether it changes it beha its behavior because uh, for a long time we have heard that there is some rethinking in Pakistan, that terrorism poses a threat first and foremost to Pakistan itself. So the proof will be uh, in uh, what we get on the table, what is served finally. And we have to wait and watch what happens to this initiative because without Pakistan's assistance, you cannot have stabilization in Afghanistan. But with Pakistan's assistance to visualize that Afghanistan will be stabilized is very, very difficult to conceive at the moment. Okay, uh, last word to you because you seem skeptical of uh, Pakistan helping in stabilizing uh, Afghanistan and that Afghanistan, would that Afghanistan be friendly look, towards India? Look. Pakistan wants uh, essentially to control Afghanistan's India policy. And uh, they don't want Afghanistan to have an independent India policy. The Afghans still now have insisted that they will not bend to Pakistan's yeah, But does it wishes. fit in with China's uh, way of looking at Afghanistan? It is. is does it? it fit in with China's way of looking at Afghanistan? No, of course not. But what the Chinese have no leverage here because the Chinese involvement in Pakistan is for other things too. Let's face it, it is actually also for us. So, while we all want the same thing, realism demands that I say that at the moment, I am not very optimistic okay. that things will pan out as we want them to pan. All right, but we've run out of time. On that pessimist, pessimistic note, I have to end this discussion. I have to thank Dr. Javin Jacob, Ambassador Jain Prasad, Ambassador Vivek Karju.
Thank you for your pessimism, but thank, thank you, you for also <laughs> participating in this discussion. Uh, that's all we have for you today. We'll be back again next week with another interesting issue. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching.